Hello, grade 11s. We are on our second day of rational variable expressions, factoring. So factoring, as a definition, is the backwards process to expanding. So we are going to write basically the answer as a multiplication. Factoring is review for you. You've done this before, but it's good to have a refresher. The first factoring that we should always look for is common factoring. That is where we look for a greatest common factor for all the terms. It can make life easier, fast. Always look for that first. First one, 7t squared minus 14t cubed. My thought process is I always check when factoring for the greatest common factor. You look at the numbers and then you look at the variables. As I compare 7 and 14, I know both of them have a common factor of 7. t squared and t cubed would have a greatest common factor of t squared. t squared divides into both. Then I throw up a set of brackets and write down, if I were going to do the distributive law, what would I multiply 7t squared by to get what I started? So 7t squared times what gives you 7t squared? Now well, a little dull, but it's a 1. Subtract. 7 times what gives me 14? And t squared times what gives me t cubed? I need one more t. Done. And that has been written as a multiplication. 7t squared times the binomial 1 minus 2t. B. I'm looking for a greatest common factor. I look for numbers first and then for x's. 36 and 24 would have a greatest common factor of 12. We look as big as we can get. For x's, the largest that would divide into x to the fifth and into x to the seventh would be the smaller of the two, but we wouldn't go any smaller than that. x squared wouldn't be the greatest common factor. Then I put up a set of brackets and show what I would multiply that greatest common factor by to get what I started. 12x to the fifth times 3x squared would give me 36x to the seventh plus 12x to the fifth times 2. I don't need any more x's. I've already got enough on the outside. I am done. Do a quick check. If I were to do the distributive law, would I get what I started with? Last one. 9x squared y plus 6xy minus 3xy squared. My thought process is I need the greatest common factor, and I need to consider all of the different terms. 9x squared y, 6xy, and 3xy squared. I need to consider the numbers, the x's, and the y's. The numbers, my greatest common factor is 3. I have an x in every term, and the greatest common factor that would divide into all of them would be x. x squared doesn't divide into x, so it wouldn't work. For y's, I would need a y to the 1, so that it would divide into 9x squared y, 6xy, and minus 3xy squared. That's my greatest common factor. What do I multiply that by to get what I started with? 3xy times, I need a 3 to make a 9. I need one more x to get the x squared. I already have an x at the front, so I don't need another one to create that. 3xy times 2 gives me 6xy. Take away, what do I multiply 3xy by to get minus 3xy squared? Well, I already have the 3. I already have the x, and I'm going to need one more y. If I do distributive law on that, I will get what I started with.
So we always check for the greatest common factor first. The second thing we will look for is simple trinomials. Simple trinomials look like x squared plus bx plus c, where this is always, I'm sorry, this is always an invisible 1 in front of the x squared. For simple trinomials, we are going backwards to expanding. That means we are undoing FOIL. So to write x squared plus 7x plus 12 as a multiplication, we know that we started with two binomials to multiply to get a trinomial. When we factor this, I want my firsts to give me x squared. So I need an x and an x. I'm going to do the 12 next. I know that my lasts, these two numbers, multiply together to give me 12. It could be 3 and 4. It could be 2 and 6. It could be 1 and 12. So for the choice, I need to think about outside, inside will add to give me 7. That choice will give me 7x. x plus 3, x plus 4. Let's do a quick check. FOIL. x squared. Outside. 4x. Inside. 3x. Last. 12. I got what I started with. If I FOIL x plus 3 times x plus 4, I get x squared plus 7x plus 12. So that is factored form. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. For the last example, we noticed when determining what goes into our brackets when factoring a simple trinomial, for the two numbers at the end, we are looking for two numbers that multiply for the last, which in this case is negative 8, and our two numbers are going to add, that's the outside inside of FOIL, to negative 2. So I need to brainstorm combinations that multiply to negative 8 and add to negative 2. If I multiply to a negative, I need one positive and one negative. Numbers that multiply to 8 are 1 and 8 or 4 and 2. 1 and 8 is never going to add to negative 2. So the combination must be 4 and 2. If I want to add to a negative number, then the bigger one will be the negative. Those are my numbers. Since I'm dealing with y, for firsts, I have y and y. And this has already told me what the signs are. Negative 4, positive 2. It doesn't matter if you order the brackets backwards, y plus 2, y minus 4. That doesn't matter. Third one, x squared minus 3x minus 40. I see a trinomial. I know it's going to be factored with two brackets. Since my firsts are x squared, I have x and x. I need to determine my two numbers. Those two numbers multiply to minus 40, add to minus 3. Numbers that multiply to 40 would be 1 and 40, 2 and 20, 4 and 10, 5 and 8, and we need to multiply to a negative. So I need one of my numbers to be positive, one of my numbers to be negative. The only combination of those listed that worked was 5 and 8. If I want to add to a negative, the larger one needs to be the negative. So I need a negative 8, and I need a positive 5. Do a quick FOIL and check that we're right. First would be x times x, x squared. Outside would be 5x. Inside, minus 8x. Lasts, minus 40. If you put 5x and minus 8x together, you do get what you started with. We did it right. d squared plus 3d minus 10. 
I know that I have a trinomial, a simple trinomial, because there's an invisible one at the front. So that means I can throw up two sets of brackets. I am undoing FOIL. At the beginning of my brackets, I have a D, because first gave me D squared. The two numbers that I'm looking for multiply to minus 10. Add to 3. If I multiply to a negative, I must need a positive and a negative. Multiplying to 10, I have 1 and 10, 2 and 5. The numbers 1 and 10 will never add to 3. The choice is 2 and 5. If I'm going to add to a positive, the larger of the two will be positive. My numbers are positive 5 and negative 2. For factoring, we always check for a greatest common factor first. Then we see if I have a simple trinomial. That is where there is a 1 at the front of a trinomial like so. Thirdly, there are two special cases of trinomials that can show up from time to time. Difference of squares is the easiest to spot. Difference, meaning subtract, I am looking for two things being subtracted. Squares, meaning things that are perfect squares like x squared or like the number 25, because that can be written as 5 squared, are examples of squares that we're looking for. This is a square and that is 11 squared. That is a difference of squares. Although it does not look like a trinomial, because a trinomial we know has three terms, it is actually a trinomial in disguise. This one is technically x squared plus 0x minus 121. But this doesn't need to be written down, so it does look like it only has two things. But it is considered a trinomial because it has degree 2 and degree 0. These are really slick to factor because you can memorize the quick little formula. I'm doing the same process for the first one that I did on the last slide, where I am undoing FOIL for this problem. Remember that it's really x squared plus 0x minus 121. For my firsts, I need x and x. I need two numbers that multiply to 121 and add to 0. Well, if I have the same number in both cases, have one that's positive and one that's negative, they will multiply to 121, but also add to 0 at the same time. Difference of squares always has a positive and a negative. 9a squared minus 16. I consider the following. First of all, is there a greatest common factor, a number or a letter that divides into both terms? No. Secondly, is it a simple trinomial? No. I just realized I spelled that as triple. Anyways, simple trinomial. It is not. This one is one of the special ones, a difference of squares. That's the giveaway. When I factor a difference of squares, I am undoing FOIL, technically, two sets of brackets. At the beginning, for firsts, I need to have something that's identical in both brackets that will multiply to 9a squared. Well, the 9, I need a 3 and a 3. And for a squared, I need a and a. For my last, I need two numbers that multiply together to give me 16. And if I do the identical number, and have a positive and a negative, then when I do outside inside, I get a 0a term. Remember, this is the same as 9a squared plus 0a minus 16. Difference of squares, two brackets, one positive, one negative, square root of the first term, square root of the second term. Pretty slick if you've got a good memory. Third one. My thought process is, is there a greatest common factor? Yes, there is. Let's get rid of that first. 
for my two terms, I have a greatest common factor of 7 and n. I have m squareds and a force, and that's not common, so I will write a bracket for what I have left. I have an m squared. I have a minus. 7n times what gives me 28n a to the fourth. I need 4 to get my 28. I already have the n. I need a to the fourth. So I've already got it partly factored, but I need to look at this and see if there's anything further that I can do with it. Oh, it's a difference of squares. So I write my 7n again, and I factor the difference of squares in the brackets. At the beginning, I need an m. I need a positive and a negative, and I need the square root of the second half. I need a 2 and an a squared in both. The bracket should look almost identical with just the sign being different for a difference of squares. The last one is a little bit tricky. Eleven over four a squared minus eleven over nine c squared. My thought process is, gosh, that looks like a difference of squares, but it's so ugly. So I should maybe contemplate whether there's a greatest common factor first that could help me factor this thing. There is. There is an 11 in both terms. The fraction has me a bit stymied, but I'm going to at least take the 11 out and see what I'm left with. If I take 11 out of the first one, I still have a squared, and you can write it as 1 quarter times a squared or a squared over 4. doesn't matter. Subtract. I've taken an 11 out of the second one as well, which I would be left with c squared over 9. Halfway there, I have my greatest common factor. I need to see if I can factor that as a difference of squares. The giveaway is two things with a minus sign in between. If I can factor, it will be two sets of brackets, one with a positive sign, one with a negative sign, where the first terms are identical, and the last terms are identical. a squared over 4. Square root of a squared is a. Square root of 4 is 2. And it is true that a over 2 times a over 2 is a squared over 4. Square root of c squared is c. Square root of 9 is 3. And it is true that c over 3 times c over 3 is c squared over 9. Perfect. There are two other special trinomials, perfect squares. I don't necessarily have these memorized, but they're kind of interesting. My thought process is the same. Is there a greatest common factor for those three terms? No. Is it a simple trinomial? Well, actually it is. It happens to be a special case. And only if you have a good memory do you need to keep this under your fingertips. It's a simple trinomial that I can write with two sets of brackets, where the first terms give me x squared, x and x. The two numbers that I use multiply to 36 and add to 12. And everything's positive. So the two numbers that multiply to 36 and add to 12 are 6 and 6. The pattern that we're looking for is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared for a perfect square. Well, this one follows. a squared. This last term is 6 squared. Is it true that the middle term is 2 times x times 6? Yes, it is. It's 12x. That follows the pattern of perfect square, perfectly. So, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, and it equals a plus b, a plus b. Let's look at b. 4x squared plus 20x plus 25. There is a greatest common factor. No, there isn't, sorry. I thought there was for a second. There is not. So I'm going to do the thought process. Does this fit a perfect square? 
It's very pretty. The first term is 2x squared. The last term is 5 squared. So is it true that the middle term is 2 times 2x times 5? 2 times 2 is 4 times 5 is 20x. Yes, it is. This is a perfect square. That means to factor it, I need a single 2x, 2x, and a single 5 and 5. If you don't like looking for this pattern in a trinomial, you can always factor these as simple trinomials. But the difference of squares that we did a moment ago are so sweet, it would be worth memorizing. x squared minus a squared, their factored form is x plus a x minus a. We have three types of factorings today. Factoring methods. Here's some homework, 83, 1 to 3, and four different really amazing puzzles out of your course notes.